All right, let's do number 48 now. <clears throat> so this is a Compton scattering experiment again. Uh, you're scattering at an angle of 14 point, 17.4 degrees. Uh, there's a free electron that was that, that was at rest. And it recoils with a speed, so we have a kinetic energy. Calculate the wavelength of incident photon and the angle through which the electron scatters. And so, <clears throat> you know, if I want to start this problem, I'm, I'm originally thinking, okay, well, this deals with Compton scattering, so I'll use my Compton scattering formula, and then one minus cosine theta. And <clears throat> this doesn't really work because we're given, let's see, what are we given? We're given the recoil, we're given the, the, the cosine theta here, but we're not given anything about these guys, right? But we do know that cosine theta kind of relates to this, which is also related to um, the, the speed of the electron. So somehow we have to tie all these in together and uh, we'll be able to figure out both of these values. We have cosine theta, so these are unknown, but we have to figure them out. And then we can use that to figure out um, both the angle of the electron and then <clears throat> the angle of, uh, sorry, and then the initial incident energy. Okay, so let's do that. Um, we can start with solving for um, like a generic uh, um, final lambda in terms of initial lambda because that'll give us you know some information that we, if we can plug something in then we'll be golden so let's go like this lambda final is equal to h over mc times 1 minus cosine theta plus lambda initial and just to have it in terms of numbers, <clears throat> let's go ahead and plug this in. So 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34, time divided by the mass of the electron, times three times 10 to the eighth, gives me that value, and one minus cosine of 17.4 gives me another value. So we can write that down, record that answer, 1.109, times 10 to the negative 13 is uh, meters is e plus lambda initial is equal to lambda final. So <clears throat> since we want to know uh, lambda final or lambda initial, if we can figure out somehow lambda final, then we can get our lambda initial, right? Because there, there's a, just a very simple conversion that happens. It's a linear conversion, but it's not that simple. So we're gonna have to do a few more things. Um, you can, with, with these problems, it's always good to start with PI is equal to PF and EI is equal to EF. These two formulas are the key to figuring out these things. And then you wanna blow up these P's, so PY and PX, right, is equal to PXF is equal to PYF. So these, th I mean, these are your, your three approaches to figuring this problem out. <clears throat> Um, and what we'll do is we'll try to um, solve this problem in terms of, I believe, the initial energy, because we can know the final energy in terms of gamma final, and if we plug that back in, then we can get some kind of value. But um, let's see what the best way to do that is. Um, we know what the momentum of the electron is. That can be kind of helpful somewhere. Um, but I think what I'll do is I'll set up energy Energy initial is equal to energy final. So, so let's do that one. So energy initial is equal to energy final. This is where you have to make sure that everything on one side equals like, you know, the other side. You can't just like ignore a term. So the energy initial is the energy of the photon initial plus the energy of the electron initial is equal to the energy of the photon final plus the energy of the electron final. Um, <clears throat> and the good thing is we kind of know this term because we're given it, in ter we, have the, we have a velocity link to that. Um, we don't know this term, but we do know this term and we do not know this term. 
Okay, so it kind of seems like it's a little bit spotty, but let's see what we can do. So energy final um, is going, we're, we're going to try to do it. Um, um, we'll just try to keep it as uh, like this, this energy uh, gamma, uh, because we don't need to, we don't actually need to expand it out, and then plus mc squared gamma. So all I did here was I kept my energies and my gammas, and then I blew up my rest mass energy, and now my effective mass energy due to my moving. So this this incorporates the kinetic and rest mass energy into it. Okay, so now. We have to figure out well what is this gamma term okay but what what's what's better about this is that e y minus e gamma final is equal to m c squared gamma minus m c squared and another way of rewriting this would be <coughs> um, e gamma final right so if we well hmm let's see um, for now Let's just keep it. Let's keep that order the same. Um, but we can we can solve this out. And the reason why we're going to solve this out is I'll show you. We know that energy is equal to h frequency. So energy is equal to h c over lambda. So we can rewrite these as h c over lambda i minus h c over lambda f. h c over lambda i minus h c over lambda f is equal to m c squared gamma minus m c squared. Because we're interested in these terms, right? Because that's what we're trying to solve for. We're trying to get another version of that so we can plug it in back there. Let's pull out an HC, all right? So HC is equal to one over lambda I minus one over lambda F is equal to MC squared gamma minus MC squared. And then we divide everything by HC. One over lambda F is equal to MC squared gamma minus MC squared, all divided by HC, all right? Um, <clears throat> you could pull out a C here, um, and it'll make our calculations easier, so we'll do that in a second. But now we have another form of um, our gammas in terms of some kind of constant. And so basically, if we solve for one of these gammas, we can plug it in here, uh, not here, there, uh, and we can get a value for a final gamma. And once we have that final gamma, we're in a very good shape. Okay, so let's do that. But just note that, um, you know, solving for this will require adding, you know, a reciprocal. So what we'll do is we won't plug, we won't solve for one, we'll plug it into here because that the, the other equation is much more simple than this one. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve, solve this uh, little thing. Uh, I'm gonna cancel my C's. Uh, and keeping one C in the, the numerator, I have to solve for gamma first. So 1 over S, SQRT1 minus, and our V was given as uh, uh, 1280 kilometers per second. So I'm going to multiply that by 1,000. Okay. I'm going to divide that by 9 times 10 to the 16. I'm going to square that top term. Okay. So we get some kind of, re um, sorry, minus. It's the same because it's a symmetric function. So we are happy with that. And then now we, so we found the incident wavelength, right? That's what it was asking for, the wavelength of the incident photon. Now let's figure out the, the, um, the actual direction at which the electron scatters. And what we know is that um, our momentums need to equal. So like, how do we get to theta? Well, we get to theta by defining pfx and pfy, right? Because these, these deal with thetas in here. And so the best one that we can kind of go with is pfy, right? Uh, or like piy is equal to pfy, where piy is equal to zero. And our pfy is going to be p prime gamma sine theta plus p prime electron sine phi and this is what we're solving for well we now can figure out what this value is of p prime uh, we have theta so check check um do we have this value uh i think so i think we have this value because 
um, because uh, we have the final energy of our of our guy. Um, we'll just have to plug it in, and then we just need sine phi. So um, <clears throat> we can treat these as negatives of each other, right? Because of that other uh, reason that the theta negative theta is equal to ne negative sine theta, right? So we'll just set these equal to each other. Sine theta all over p e prime is equal to sine phi. So now let's let's figure out um, all of these values real quick. So the final momentum of the electron is equal to mv gamma. Okay, right? So the mass of the electron is 1.11 times 10 to the negative 31. V is moving at 4. Point, or what was it? 2.18 uh, times 10 to the sixth, right? Because we, we did that multiplication um, of 20, 2180 times 1,000. And then gamma factor, well, we already had that gamma factor. It's basically one, two, six, four, okay? So that's P final electron. And then let's get the P final gamma, right? Because we don't know that. And that is just given by E is equal to PC. So E over C is equal to P. So we need E final over C is equal to P. How do we get E final? Well, E final is going to be HC over lambda. I'm going to try to see, did we, did we calculate E final anywhere? Uh, let's see. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we did. So we're going to have to get a lambda final, right? We're going to have to get a lambda final. We're going to have to plug that in. So um, all right, that's fine. So E final over C is equal to P final gamma. And E final. This is a not frequency e final is equal to hc over lambda all divided by c is equal to p final gamma our c's let's see what happens to our c's um uh, times one over c our c's should cancel here right because it's the same thing as saying hc over lambda times one over c um, that's what we just substituted in so our C's cancel. So we're just left with H over lambda final is equal to PF gamma. And so what is lambda final? Well, lambda final is given by that constant bridge that we created a long time ago. And that's equal to 1.109 times 10 to the negative 13 plus our lambda initial. 103 times 10 to the negative 13 plus well, we solved what lambda initial was. Lambda initial is 1.208 times 10 to the negative 6. Meters. All right. And um, you know, I don't actually like that initial. All right, so I got stuck because I was not getting the correct value of lambda. And the correct value of lambda is dependent on, um, I was not dividing the entire fraction by 2a. So I was only dividing the radical by 2a. And so when I changed that, I got a new value of lambda. And that new value of lambda, we can write down in our let's view. So our new value of lambda here is, um, 1.009885 times 10 to the negative 10. Then we can take that value and plug it into our <clears throat> final momentum of our particle because we know what the energy is. We can relate the energy over C to PF. We know H, we know C's will cancel. And so we can get a PF here. And so our new PF here is given by lambda F. And lambda F is adding that, that term to lambda I. So that term is, um, let's see, where is it? It's here. So now that we know lambda I, we can get lambda F. 
And so let's quickly, let's solve for lambda f. Lambda f is going to be um, <clears throat> this answer plus 1.109. So lambda f is equal to, uh, and this, this answer is actually, let's see, I'm drawing it out here. Um, my goodness, hang on. I want to shrink this, but I cannot. Okay, I'll just have it here. So lambda f is equal to this plus 1.0098. And then that answer is 1.0109 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. Using that, we can use E is equal to PC to solve for PF. And why are we solving for PF again? Because we determine that sine of phi can be found like that. All right. So now we do h is equal to pf gamma lambda f, so h over pf, or sorry, h over lambda f. My goodness, what am I doing? Here, um, e over c is equal to pf gamma, and then we can rewrite e as hc over gamma is equal to e, and then we rewrite that, we cancel some c's, and we get h over lambda f is equal to pf final. So uh, we found lambda f, so if we divide lambda f and we create that 1.1109 times 10 to the negative 10 meters, then we'll get a final momentum of, let's see, let's take that um, value, 1.1010199 times 10 to the negative 10. Uh, we take that division here. Where, where was it? Okay, right here, and we get six point six five five times ten to the negative forty four. Uh, times ten to the negative twenty four. And now we take this all up here, and we can plug it in because now we have gamma final. Um, we have momentum final. And we have sine of that. So I'll take answer times sine of 17.4, all divided by that momentum for our electron times 2.18 times 10 to the 6 times our gamma factor, which literally does not change it that much at all. And then we take the arc sine, or the inverse sine of the answer, we get 80.5. Now, depending on how you rounded this, you'll get 80.5, 81.8, like this is the exact same procedure, but for now, I'll just write down the final theta is equal to 80.5 degrees. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Um, hopefully it's not too jagged.